traditionally, snowboards have been built with what's known as a camber profile, and that's essentially where the board arches up in between the feet. Then a few years ago, LibTech invented what is now a revolutionary snowboard called the Skate Banana, which had the exact opposite of that. Since that point, brands have been developing a whole range of different camber profiles, um, ranging from flat to hybrid and everything in between. Today we're going to be looking at the four main types of camber profile and what they'll do for the different styles of riding. So let's start with traditional camber. So this is the Ride DH. It's one of the staples in Ride's line and as I mentioned it features that tried and tested camber profile. So if you look at the board from side on, you'll see that it actually arches up in between your feet and when laid flat on the ground you'll notice that there are four contact points so two in the tail here and also two in the nose so camber is a really tried and tested profile a lot of pro riders will swear by it and not use anything else the reason for this is they have a lot of pop in them they're very lively and responsive edge to edge and you'll have no problem holding an edge when you're carving that said for beginners, you may want to look at uh, one of the other profiles because those four contact points we mentioned earlier can be quite prone to hooking up if you're learning to turn. So this is the LibTech Skate Banana. It's the board that really started it all with the whole rocker revolution. And as you can see, if you look at it side on, it does have that quite distinct uh, banana shape. You've got the tail that rises up out of the snow and then you've got a nice continuous rocker through to the nose which is also slightly lifted. So the advantages of this shape are more or less twofold. The first one is because those contact points are going to be raised out of the snow you're going to have a much more loose playful catch-free ride which is really useful for beginners that are learning to turn. It's also going to help with uh, jib jibbers and rail riders who are looking for lots of snow slow speed maneuverability and who don't want to be catching their edges when they're spinning onto rails. The second distinct advantage is that the rocker shape is also going to help you get extra floats in powder. That said, the rocker profile does have some disadvantages compared to traditional camber. Unlike camber, these boards are going to be slightly less poppy and they can also be prone to washing out when you're landing particularly big jumps because you don't have those four contact points to really set in when you're landing. So let's talk about flat profiles now. K2 Snowboards are a brand that make a whole bunch of flat boards. This particular model, the Slay Blade, is one of those models and it does feature a largely flat profile throughout. This year they've actually mixed it up a little bit and, and have raised this flat profile up slightly off the ground, but for the most part it does have that, that characteristic. Flat profiles are designed sort of to have the best of both worlds. When you stand on the board, your weight is spread across the whole effective edge, which is in contact with the snow, and counterintuitively, that actually means that you're less likely to catch your edge. The boards don't have quite as much pop as camber, but they're also less prone to catching their edges as a camber board. So they're great for someone who's looking for a really stable ride, and who wants kind of the characteristics of a camber board and a rocker board in one package. A lot of brands have experimented with what they call combo profiles, where they blend in aspects of both camber and rocker into one snowboard. The Burton Easy Living is one such example. This particular board uses Burton's flying V shape, and what that is is rocker between your feet, which then transitions into camber in the tail, as well as the nose. So, as you'd expect, these combo profiles have a combination of rocker and camber elements. There's a huge array of different varieties on the market, and each type will have its own distinct set of advantages and disadvantages. It's probably best to consider them on a case-by-case -case basis, and to try and do a little bit, bit of research as to how that particular board rides. So, with all of these different camber profiles available on the market, it can definitely be a little confusing to know where to start. We'd recommend really thinking about the way you want to be riding on your board. You know, are you going to be hitting loads of big kickers? Are you going to be jibbing most of the time? Or do you want something that can do everything? Um, once you've figured that out, it should be a lot easier to figure out the kind of camber profile that will suit your style of riding. 